So nobody's immune to body dysmorphia, guys, or EDs, especially in the modern fitness space, which pushes both of those things in a commercialized fashion very heavily. Some of you may choose to do that. I'm doing it now because I'm competing and I have a channel, I need content. I want to challenge myself to do it. But over the long term, man, yeah, this is dumb. There's really no reason to do it. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. Guess what? We're back on the stationary bike today. Can you believe it? I live on this freaking thing. Uh, you can see the tan line is uneven again. <sighs> Once this whole show is over, guys, I'm going to go on like an unhinged rant about why I probably won't ever do this again. Really, the biggest thing, I mean, besides just cutting, which I've gotten more accustomed to cutting, I would say, just eating less. Like, you get adjusted to it. It's kind of annoying at first, I would say, especially if you just came out of a long bulk like I did. But I'm adjusting to cutting better. Really, I think I could not bulk as hard as I did going forward, given nutrition adjustments and stuff, and still make quality gains. But really, I, dude, the tanning and the shaving and, oh my god, man, this, this is just not how I want to live my life, dude. I don't know how some of you guys shave your bodies over and over. That's going to lead us into the topic of today's video, because I've been getting a number of questions, like via Patreon and some consultations and stuff, about what to do when cutting. Okay, and I want to draw a distinction in this video, guys, because whenever you talk about bulking and cutting like I do on this channel, once I finally open your eyes to the fact that main gaining doesn't even exist, let alone work, guys always have questions about, well, hey, man, I'm cutting, but I'm scared I'm going to lose strength and lose all my muscle. So I want to break down in this video the differences between healthy cutting or just kind of more general cutting as opposed to like shredding. What I'm doing now, and once again, for a show, okay, I would classify that more so as shredding, as in you're cutting to a point that is purely cosmetic. Like there is no tangible, intelligent reason to go below 10% body fat. It's pure vanity. All right, now I know some guys are gonna get upset in the comments. Oh, there is a, there's no reason to go 10% or below. You can make the argument there's no reason to go below 15% realistically speaking. Now, some guys, depending on your sport, you may just get there because you do so much cardio and conditioning work. But for the most part, I'd say at least 12% body fat for men. There's no need to go below that. And some guys do have a lower body fat set point per se. But once again, dude, I'm not going to sit here and entertain these dummies who are like, my body fat set point is 9%. No, it's not, dude. Just because you have some semblance of abs, that does not mean you're 8% body fat, okay? There are plenty of guys who are 15, 16, 17% and still have abs visible because their abs are so built. So that's a whole nother kind of side tangent. But a lot of guys on the internet, they think if they have any semblance of abs that they're shredded sub 10%. Or oh, you see this new actor, dude? He got lean for this movie. He's, you know, these magazines and these stupid journalists will be like, he's a shocking 5% body. It's like, it's not 5%. You have to talk about kind of the body dysmorphia and unrealistic standards too when you bring this up. Because on one side, there's those guys who think abs means sub 10%. Then on the other side, there's the guys who think that if they don't have super shredded abs, that they're teetering on obesity. So that's kind of the first thing you have to understand, guys. And I know it can be difficult, especially if you're younger, you have social media in your hand all day, you just see shredded guy after shredded guy on the internet all day long. All natural, of course. None of them would lie about it. They're all natty, right? But you need to get a baseline understanding of what your body fat actually is. So guys will commonly hit me up, man, I think I'm like 25%, bro. How much do you weigh? How tall are you? I'm 5'9", like 162. Can I see a physique picture? They send you a picture. They have like an itty bitty little love handle like most people do. And they're like, man, I think I'm spilling over, bro. It's like, oh my God. So it's hard to get people just from a baseline level to realize what their body fat range actually is. You don't have to know it per se to a T. You don't have to go get DEXA scans and stuff if you don't want to. But you need to have a general idea of where you're at. But that's going to go into healthy cutting, okay? 
Somebody hit me up recently and he was like, hey man, I'm about like 27% body fat. And he sent me his photos and that checks out. Like he was, you know, he, I'd say at minimum 25% body fat. And he's like, I'm scared to cut though because I saw your videos about bulking and I want to keep all my strength and I'm going to lose it all. And I'm going to lose my size if I cut it all. And I was like, dude, you're 27% body fat. I've said repeatedly in my bulking videos, guys, once you get to that range of about 20% or so body fat for men, you don't have to keep bulking. There's no need to. You can if you want. I've said before, you can recomposition there at 20% and even gradually lose body fat and still have good progress. I try to focus on in my videos about bulking, which I haven't made in a while because I just haven't been doing it, but I'm trying to talk to the guys here who are legitimately skinny and skinny fat meaning they don't have a muscular base. They probably don't even have abs a lot of the time if they are slim. If they do have abs, they're precious. They cling to them even though they're holding back their progress, right? But then guys who are on the higher end of the body fat spectrum will see that and they're like, oh crap, oh, I wanna get all the gains too. I guess I should keep bulking and I'm 25%. It's like, no, you don't have to do that, man. You probably should cut, okay? Is it vital that you cut? Like, are you at some massive health risk being 23 to 25% body fat in the immediate term? I don't think so. But if you're an older guy, right? You know, you're in your 30s, 40s now, you're still above 20% and have been for years and years. That's probably not ideal. The amount of strength gain you're going to get is probably gonna be negligible. Maybe bench press leverages, that's fine. And again, if you compete in powerlifting or something, and you have to bloat max. I get it, right? I understand you. But most people aren't competing. Uh, I go to LA Fitness and put on a chain belt and do pull-ups. I'm an athlete. Okay, bro, sure. But that's one end of it. So if you are at a point where you're, again, just roughly speaking, 20% plus body fat, especially if you're very heavy, if you're like 30% plus, if you're in the obese range, etc., you don't have to worry about losing strength while cutting, okay? If your training is on point, if your recovery is on point, if you have a good diet, full of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, enough protein, etc. You can still gain strength as you cut. So don't be scared to cut, okay? Cutting in its own right is not like a death wish for your gains. You're not gonna magically just shrink. Like guys, if you're 25% and you wanna get down to 15, if you do things correctly, right? Follow the advice I give you on this channel. You can gain strength the entire time as you go from 25 down to 15. Now for a lot of guys, once you hit that 15 and then below range, you're probably gonna notice some level of difference in at least how fast you gain strength. You're probably gonna start to plateau more. It's about trade-offs. If you have to lose a lot of body fat, right, for your own long-term health, and if that means trading off 20, 25 pounds on your bench, is that really that big of a deal? For most people, it's not. So if you do need to cut now for health reasons, don't be scared you're gonna lose all your gains, okay? If that does happen, there's really three main reasons. You cut way, way, way too fast, okay? Like you just went on excessively low food intake, you're doing insane amounts of cardio, bad diet, you follow the anabolic cookbook for all your meals and you're nutrient deficient, something like that. But otherwise, if you do things buttoned up, you're gonna be fine for the most part. Now that's gonna lead into shredding. This is where legitimate problems are going to happen for most guys, okay? So if you're at the point where you're, say, right now 15% or so, and you want to get down to, like, single digits, bro, I want to shred for the summer for the sake of vanity, and again, be honest with yourself, it's okay to admit it, potential hormone issues, I can tell you myself, guys, whenever I was cutting initially, I was totally fine. The past number of weeks, my libido's tanked. Like, I haven't even had the urge to crank it. Seriously, in weeks at this point. I'm in public, I'll still look at girls and stuff for sure, but I don't have that like that urge to just like, I gotta, I just haven't had it. And part of that is more than likely going to be the fact that I just keep dwindling down my food intake. And also I'm doing tons of cardio, I'm just tired all the time. So once again too, if you are doing a normal cut from 25 to say 15, your energy still should not be that bad. Your energy is probably going to improve because you're reducing the excess body fat you're carrying. But if you're going from 15 to 10, I mean, you're going from a healthy weight down to a weight that you don't need to be down to. I'm a zombie at this point. I get up, I do my cardio on the bike, I stand at my computer, I train some clients, and I'm putting the weights on the bar. I'm just like, oh my God, man. You know, even at the gym, 
I do two exercises, my first two heavier type exercises. I'll just be standing in the middle of the gym floor, just like exhausted. And I'm still sleeping enough. I'm beginning seven to eight hours of sleep too, right? I have a nutrient dense diet, all that stuff. I'm doing it all right per se, but you know, my maintenance calories roughly are, I'm not sure exactly what they are because my weight keeps kind of fluctuating, but they're minimum 3000, right? The amount of muscle I have at this point, minimum 3000, probably higher. They're gonna be down to like 2000 or less a day, right? You know, the daily average recommendation for sedentary normies, 2000 a day. If you're a serious lifter, guys, a grown man, 2000 calories a day is nothing. If you're totally new and don't have much muscle yet, you could probably go a bit above 2000 and make progress, especially if you're smaller and shorter. But if you're average height or above, man, 2000 calories, that's kitty food. But again, if you want to get excessively shredded, very lean, that's what you got to do. You watch a lot of these popular influencers, they eat like eighth grade girls. Like, yeah, man, I'm uh, benching 350 on 2000 calories a day. It's like all natty, right? All natty. And I do have a pretty high metabolism because I stand all day which is beneficial. I've talked about in a previous video, the most overlooked fat loss strategy. If you guys are very sedentary and you sit all day at your job or in a car or both, and I understand you can't necessarily change that, but look into a standing desk, okay? I think that's one of the quickest hacks to expend more energy during the day without having to just, you know, walk in circles around the neighborhood, sit on the bike like I'm doing, etc. You could even, if you work from home, you could do what I'm doing now, right? I'm in front of my monitors, just on the bike, right? Now it's kind of annoying to, you know, sit here and type and edit and stuff while I'm moving my legs, it gets kind of pesky, but it's doable. Once you're cutting down for the sake of vanity, you're gonna hit that point where it's like, man, do I actually wanna do this? And some guys do, some guys really want more than anything, they're hell bent on being shredded, they got a beach trip, they wanna get as lean as possible, you know, ziz, aesthetics, bra, whatever. Go ahead and do what you want, man. But I'm just telling you guys, once you start cutting for the sake of vanity itself, right, you're already in the mid-teens body fat and you're trying to get 10, 9, 8, or even below. People who've competed in bodybuilding can probably attest to this. I mean, this stuff gets annoying, dude. It gets very, very annoying. And that's another thing, when you start cutting for vanity purposes, I think that's where the body dysmorphia really starts to creep in for people. Like, I understand it, man. Because you look in the mirror, especially if you compete in some type of bodybuilding, it's just never enough. Right? It's like, oh, am I lean enough? Oh, my love handle's still kind of there. You know, you're moving the abs around to get the perfect angle and stuff. And then I haven't even competed yet, but I can only imagine once you compete, you see how some of these people look. You know, they're going to look crazy, right? I understand why bodybuilding gets such a bad reputation. You know, you commonly will see, like, people in medicine and psychology talk about, like, bigorexia, body dysmorphia, and it's like, screw that guy, bro, he's D-Y-E-L, all that. I understand it, man. Like, I think you can make the case that people that do hardcore serious bodybuilding over and over, it's pretty much inevitable you're going to have a legitimate form of body dysmorphia. I don't know if it's even escapable. And I'm starting to realize that, again, this is my first show I'm about to be doing. I'm understanding it. I don't want to say I'm immune to body dysmorphia because I've made so many videos about it and I've been through it when I was younger, right? But I can see it. Like, I can totally get it, man. The obsessiveness you have to do to truly shred down for vanity purposes, it's crazy. Always staring at yourself in the mirror. Always checking the angles. Okay, more cardio, less food, more of this. More. Like, it's just so obsessive. You know what I mean? And it's not to say that people who are cutting for general health purposes don't do that as well. Because I've gotten many comments from viewers talking about how they went from obese to borderline A-N-O-R-E-X-I-C. I think I spelled that right. I can't say it because YouTube gets mad. But they've basically went from one extreme to the other. It happens, man. I've gotten so many comments like that. They'll go from, in 2020, they're 350 pounds Beginning of 2022, they're 160 pounds. Like, they'll lose 200 pounds of weight. And then they're obsessed with staying shredded. Even though they have loose skin and all this stuff, and the loose skin messes with their head, and they do tons of cardio, and they're scared of the scale ever going up, even though they can't gain strength, right? So nobody's immune to body dysmorphia, guys. Or EDs. Especially in the modern fitness space, which pushes both of those things in a commercialized fashion very heavily. But fundamentally... You can cut in a reasonable time frame, a reasonable level, 
especially for health purposes, some of you simply need to, you can do that in a safe way without losing all your strength, all your size, without getting an ED, without having to be this obsessive food maniac. So don't confuse 8% ripped up vanity cutting with cutting for health purposes. They're two totally different things and a lot of people simply have to do the latter. They need to cut for their own health. Nobody needs to cut down for vanity purposes to 8%. So those are the main differences, guys. Health cutting versus vanity cutting. Understand them. Realize that there are major differences and don't get them confused, okay? And once again, if you do have body dysmorphia now, if you think you do, I have some videos on this channel that could potentially help you out. And if you really need to consult with somebody who's licensed to talk about these type of things, like a counselor, if you really do. No shame in it. But this has been the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Big ups, as always, to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. Tell me what you want to see next in the comments down below. Share this with somebody who needs to see it. And I will catch you guys next time.